everybody, Simu Alice again, and this is particularly for the Tai Chi people, and I miss you guys so much, um, but it is actually very instrumental for the kids and for the Kung Fu students in particular. Um, this has to do with that, well, you know what, this is going to be my warm-up while I explain this to you because I'm not warmed up at all, and this has to do with strength and flexibility the yin and the yang of it all. You know, a lot of people think, oh my God, look at that, her legs are way up high in the air. Yeah, but can she sustain them? What kind of power is behind that? Too much flexibility with not enough strength. Let me get proper here. Not enough strength is a great opportunity for an injury, right? We don't want to do that. You have to be very, very careful. We're really, really good about that here at Kung Fu Connection. And then the converse is true. All this strength and power, you've seen those guys all muscle bound, they can't even drop their arms, you know, without that flexibility, it's, it's a very limiting, very constricted way to be. And the whole point of these beautiful Chinese arts is about balance, right? So strength and flexibility. To have the proper grace for Tai Chi, you need strength and flexibility. This isn't about just, oh look how pretty it looks like dance. No. <laughs> There's a method to this and it's very, very specific. It's interrelated with the medical arts of China and as long as you follow these concepts you will be safe and you will have a transformative experience and you can continue to progress in a lifetime that you will actually expand based on these arts. Remember, this is about longevity, vitality, you know, balance and proper health. So that's my little warm up. So before we get started, you need to warm up however best suits you. I don't want to take you through a whole warm up. You know how to do that. Just want to focus on this one thing right now. So we are going to work on snake creeps down. That poor snake having a hard time creeping down that damn tree all the time. So let's review this formula, okay? So what we're going to do is let's do the feet first. So before we do that, you have to understand that snake, snake creeps down occurs in what is called Kai Mabo. Notice my heel is down. Notice my foot is flat. If I were more stretched, my back would be properly up. This is your posture, not uh, uh, uga, 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 monkey forward falling all over the place. Now, obviously, that is the goal. If you can't get down there, which most of us can't, this is fine. This is a million times better than this, than being low and misaligned. It's much better that if you're in a position that is correct, that's properly rooted and well aligned, spine and everything. Again, no injury, right? So we're going to modify this. We'll go very, very slow. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to go from side to side, from Kai Mabo to Mabo to Kai Mabo to Mabo. And what this will do, we're going to repeat this 10 times from side to side. If I was warmer, I'd be going all the way down, but I'm not. But you get the idea. What this will do, not only warm you up, but it starts developing that muscle memory that is so key for our bodies, which is why the Chinese say, repeat it at least 1,000 times. Then you can call it your own. So we're going to go from side to side in this way. If you want a little bit greater challenge, you put your, and it's okay because we're just stretching up for form, to allow your hands to go forward to make sure you don't hurt yourself, and you can do this side to side as well. Right? We can go like this. So this is your warm up. Try to do at least 20 of these. I'm sorry that it hurts, but this is actually opening you up for a greater opportunity and to reveal more of your potential. Remember again, you can do it up here, but don't be comfortable. You do not accomplish anything in life by being comfortable other than just doing this while everybody's you know, rushing ahead of you. So let's look at the formula of snake creeps down in terms of footwork. So we're in this, what's the name of the stance? Do you remember? Kai ma bo, please say it. Say it out loud, kai ma bo, so you remember it. So when we're in class having conversation, you can say, okay, where are you? Oh, I'm at the kai ma bo. Ah, okay. Now we're communicating with the same vocabulary. From the kai ma bo, you're going to shift your weight into a ma bo. So now you're centered, right? You can't you just don't want to push off into the other side. You want to feel 
that centering process. From this centering, you're going to rotate the front foot and go into gumbo. Say gumbo, right? So there's three portions to this. There's kai mabo, mabo, turn the toe out, gumbo. Let's do that again. Kai mabo, mabo, gumbo. Now I know you kung fu people are saying, but the stance size is wrong. We're not paying attention to that right now. We're focusing on strength and flexibility and grace. So, kai mabo, but I know your point. Mabo, gumbo, other side. And kai mabo, center mabo. The body still stays center, but the front ro leg rotates the knee. Notice the relationship of ankle to knee. I'm not over. You don't want this knee. No, 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 too much weight. You want it to be perpendicular to the floor. Ready? Again, kai mabo. Ma bo, gumbo. Again, kai ma bo, ma bo, gumbo. Again, kai ma bo, ma bo, gumbo. Make sure that your butt is under, especially here. And turn one more time. Kai ma bo, ma bo, gumbo. So that right there is a beautiful warm up. You do that for 10 minutes, you should be sweating pretty well and you should feel an opening and warmth generating through the body. Now, let's add the arms. I'm going to make this a little smaller. So here's our tree, oh, our crane at the top of the tree. Here's our snake. The snake creeps down. It's not going out over there. It has to, what happens a lot is people start reaching out. You want to go straight down first, then continue that circle. There's my mabo. See my mabo? Turn. Look what happens to my back arm. It rotates with the fingertips to the top in a crane. And this one is forward here. Let's start the circle again. And snake creeps down. Look at this nice position here, of this palm outward. And that's what leads it to go up. Again, down, through, up. Down, palm out to the front. Fingers to the ceiling. You gotta pay attention to all this detail. It's not enough just to know the steps. And notice that everything is coming together at the last moment at the same time, as opposed to what we get a lot, which is blunk, 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 blunk. We don't want that, right? The grace element. You cannot have grace without tremendous strength. Look at the most graceful athletes in the universe. Classical ballet dancers. These guys is like a piece of muscle. They're quite amazing and, and their, their grace, again, emanates from their strength. So let's do this from the forward position so that you can see from the side what's going on as well. Crane, down, look at my back. Am I doing this? No, unless I'm not warm, which I'm not really, but here. Actually, let me go the other side so I can face you. So straight down to wherever your capacity is for now. Palm is out, mabo, turn, boom, at the same time. Again, down, palm out, turn, again, one, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. That is the way to practice. You can do your form, of course, we love you to do your form, but you need to take those problem areas like this particular movement, which is not easy at all. See how low you can get? Do it incredibly slow so that your muscles are starting to be like, oh, okay, now that's supposed to feel like that. That's supposed to feel like that. And as you start giving them the memory of what the actual shape of this should be like. So practice, practice, practice. Sweat, sweat, sweat. Have a good time, and I can't wait to see you and miss you all. Bye.